Hello everyone. I hope that this message finds you safe and in good health. Today will be the first day of our amended course schedule. So in this video, I'm going to first go over the broader changes in the course and second, go over the final assignment that will take place of the regularly scheduled assignments. Before we get into details, I want to first encourage you to breathe and then to be gentle with yourselves as you complete the assignments for this course and your other courses for the semester. Given the extraordinary challenges that we are facing, it is important that you first take care of yourself and make sure that your loved ones are healthy and safe. Please keep me posted on any challenges that you might be experiencing over this time as I am willing to make accommodations based on individual needs. So let's talk about the changes in the course. As far as the course changes are concerned, we will continue this class as an online course through asynchronous communication. By asynchronous, this means the information will be transmitted intermittently and not according to our original class meeting times. In this case, you set up the time to complete the remaining course activities on the time that works best for you. I will deliver the course activities and give you a schedule, give you deadlines, and you complete the activities within those deadlines on your own terms. The remaining course materials in this sense are still designed that you spend the already allotted 160 minutes twice a week according to our original contact hours along with the outside course hours you spend on writing and reading for this course. This moves to my availability and the online tools that we'll be using for the course. I will be available via email, Zoom, Google Hangout, and by phone. On Thursday, I'm going to set up an optional Zoom meeting during the regularly scheduled course meeting time. This will be an optional meeting. It'll be set up as an open forum for you to ask questions about your assignments. Based on the attendance in that based on the attendance in that Zoom meeting and based on the need for that, I'll set up another one on Tuesday during our course meeting time and another one if need be the following Thursday. But this will all be based on participation. Again, this will be optional. And you'll get a link to that Zoom meeting the day before the meeting takes place. Along with the optional Zoom meetings, I will also hold regularly scheduled office hours on my regularly designated times on Tuesdays and Thursdays from four until six, either via Zoom, Google Hangout, or um, an immediate response to an email. If you would like to contact me through Zoom or Google Hangout or set up a phone consultation, please contact me to set up an appointment. This leads to our assignment changes. To finish this course, we will merge the information we analyzed in our cultural problem analysis, with an amended version of the cultural problem proposal into what will be called the cultural problem product research assignment. So the cultural problem product research assignment will take the place of the remaining assignments for this semester. What I have done is that I've updated Sakai to reflect this in the assignments and the grading, and I've also added a cultural problem product research assignment assignment sheet in the assignments on Sakai. Over the next week, you will spend time going over that assignment sheet, making sure you understand what I'm asking for in the assignment sheet, and thinking about ways to transfer, use the information that you've been researching over the course of the semester in relation to your cultural problem, transferring that in the context of the cultural problem product research assignment. This assignment will allow you to maintain the original inquiry into your chosen cultural problem and conduct research appropriate for the current social movement. This means that as we move forward, the rhetorical analysis number three, the cultural problem proposal, campaign, and showcases are all unfortunately suspended. Thus, to successfully complete this course, you will be responsible for the following assignments. The cultural problem product research assignment, which is going to take place of all the, re the rest of the assignments this semester. You'll also be responsible 
for short response posts to the student-led discussions and presentations that I'll talk about in a second. And finally, for those of you that still need to complete your student-led discussions about the course readings, you will be able to present your presentation on your blogs. So what I have done in that sheet or in the um, breakdown is that I have revised these assignments and the breakdown, or I should say the um, how these assignments are going to be weighted. Because the cultural problem product research assignment is going to take the place of three major assignments, well, two major assignments and one smaller assignment in the course, that new assignment is going to be worth 45% of your grade. The cultural problem analysis will continue to be 15%. The student-led presentation will be 10%. Participation and attendance, 10%. And rhetorical analysis, number one and number two, will still remain 10%. Please look at Sakai. Please review the gradebook on Sakai to review these changes. In terms of the student-led presentation, we currently have eight student presentations for the remaining of the course for the remaining course readings. To complete these presentations, the students that still need to do these presentations will post their summary response according to the same rubric that I gave at the beginning of the semester, along with their discussion questions on their blog on the designated deadline, which will be communicated in the new course schedule. You can write your summary response or you can create a video and post that video to your blog to take the place of your summary response. Once that student posts their summary response, you will respond to one of the questions that they post based on the readings, based on your understanding of the readings. In this sense, your response to their question should be a minimum of about 100 words. In this sense, if you're giving a presentation or if you're one of the eight students that still need to give a presentation, I would hope that students posting to the questions that you pose based off of your reading of the reading assignment will compel you to respond to their to their post and that that will um, spark a conversation. However, I am not requiring you to respond to any students post unless you feel compelled to. Given the nature of our circumstances and given the fact that everyone has different things going on and we're all in different um, um, locations and that this class was not designed for an online class, I cannot force anyone to develop a conversation when, when that might be outside of their purview. So in this case, when we're doing the student um, presentations and you're responding to one of the questions that you'll post on their blog, I will go back through that and look for your response to the student, um, to their presentation, and, and look at that as a contribution towards your participation and attendance grade, which will be periodically updated throughout the upcoming weeks. In terms of your participation and attendance grade, your participation and attendance grade for the rest of the semester will be based on your posts to the student-led presentations, submitting the cultural problem product research assignment rough draft on the designated due date, and the participation in the peer review workshop for the cultural problem product assignment sheet on the designated due date. So let's bring everything together. As you all know, this course is geared towards social science writing. The original course assignments were designed for a face-to-face -face CLAD setting as the context for you to develop and test your research by interacting with human social groups. As a result of the current social moment, many of you will be severely limited in attempts to collecting data using surveys, focus groups, or firsthand experiences. Additionally, the current social moment will also present a challenge in terms of developing a cultural problem campaign and enacting that campaign in the showcase format. In response to these constraints, I have decided to amend the writing assignments to one final writing assignment, which is the cultural problem product research assignment. And in this assignment, that will reflect the knowledge you learned in compiling a review of the literature and also allow you to practice applying this knowledge to an analysis of a social institution slash organization connected to your cultural problem. Thus, over the next week, you will amend your writing for this class 
by sticking to an analysis of the social institutions that produce policies, legislation, news articles, or other forms of media that are connected to your cultural problem. And I will go into more detail about that after I talk about the schedule. So if you look at the course schedule, you'll see that everything will, will divide um, the course schedule up on a weekly basis. So we have roughly about four to five weeks to go. So week one, which was going to um, end on March 29th, you will, for this week, like I said before, breathe, wrap your brain around the changes that are happening in this course, watch this video multiple times, read the new assignment sheet, and work on transitioning the current research you have about your cultural problem into the new framework for the new assignment. Another thing that you're also going to be responsible for for March 30th is reading Leslie Bunnage's article interrogating the interaction of race, gender, and class within the U.S. labor movement. So you'll notice that we will have the still student presentations on the schedule. Each student, I've, at, I've, I've located the, the um, time that you need to post your summary response to your blog. And then at the beginning of the new week, you will respond to that student's blog. And you'll see that all in the schedule. So for week one, we have Joshua and Hannah. You will post the summary, your summary response, to your present um, to your blog no later than 8 a.m. on March 30th. When week two starts, which is March March 30th, you will respond to both Joshua and Hannah's post by responding to one of the questions that they pose, and you'll have until April 2nd to do this. All of these due date all of these due dates are explicitly spelled out in the new course schedule. And so that same pattern will happen week two when we read Kenny and Dada's article, Retweeting and the Service of Protest. And Danny and Liana will do the same thing. They will post their summary response, their slash summary response presentation to their blog no later than April 6th. And then you'll have until April 9th to respond to both Danny and Liana's posts. The same thing as we move into week four will happen with Amanda, Morgan, Graham, and Tiffany. You all will post your summary response no later than April 13th. And then you, we will have um, until April 16th to post our responses to those students that are talking about the Roads Must Fall movement. When we move into week four, so I should say, as we're working through week one, week two, week three, you are also going to be com composing your cultural problem product research paper. And by April 14th, you need to have a rough draft of that paper submitted to your blog. And then we're going to spend the rest of the semester getting feedback from each other and also feedback from me. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to set up workshop groups in the next couple of weeks. And so we will use that workshop, we will use those workshop groups to revise our final papers, um, make some changes, and to also get feedback from me. And um, our final cultural problem product research assignment, which is the final assignment for this class, will be due on May 1st, no later than 11.59 p.m. So that's pretty much how the course is going to go. We have about four more weeks. We have one major assignment to go. We have um, eight students that, give their, that, that will deliver their presentations on their blogs. You'll respond to those students' presentations. We'll workshop that final assignment. You'll ask me questions. We'll discuss those questions. We'll work out some of those issues, and then we'll be good to go. So the next part of this video, I want to talk about the new assignment, which is the cultural problem product research assignment. So if you go along, or I should say, you can follow along with me as I talk through this assignment sheet and jot down any questions that you might have so that you can ask those questions to me either, either via email, in the optional Zoom meeting, or you can post your question in the comment section below on the YouTube clip. So again, the cultural problem product research assignment is designed to 
take the place of the assignments that we were going to do for this semester. So for this assignment, you will develop a thesis statement that addresses your cultural problem. To support this thesis statement, you will analyze at least one cultural product from one social institution slash organization that is connected to your cultural problem. So you've already been doing research on different um, organizations that are connected to your cultural problem. And you were already thinking about sort of cultural products that you could produce to help solve or help address the cultural problem that you've been researching. So the change that we're going to make in this assignment is that rather than you produce something, you're going to do an analysis of something that's already been produced. So when we're thinking about the social institutions, we can expand our definition of social institutions to universities, religious organizations, nonprofit, for-profit organizations, social movement groups, philanthropy groups, environmental organizations, social justice groups, even corporations, even entertainment um, studios. So these are the things or these are the institutions or the social groups that are producing these products. And these products include things like policies, campaigns, films, news articles, podcasts, curricula, legislation, documentaries, demonstrations, initiatives, and outreach programs. So for this final assignment, what you're going to do is that you're going to focus on one to three cultural products that have been produced that are connected to your cultural problem, and you're gonna analyze these products. You're gonna analyze these products similarly to how you've analyzed the, um, your objects of analysis in your rhetorical analysis papers. And then it's through this analysis you're going to, um, it's through this analysis you are going to support the thesis statement that you have about your cultural problem. So when you look at the assignment sheet, you'll notice that the rhetorical situation has changed. The major change of the rhetorical situation for this assignment is the purpose. So your role as a student researcher in the social sciences is still the same. Your audience is still the same. Readers who are concerned with the social problem or with the cultural problem that you've been researching. However, the purpose is going to see the most change. So your purpose for writing this is to examine how social institutions produce cultural products that either contribute to or mitigate the cultural problem that you've been researching over the course of the semester. Therefore, this genre of writing will be thesis driven. So you will use the sections of this paper to support your thesis, and then once you have supported your thesis through an analysis of the cultural products, you'll make recommendations for further research. So when you look at the assignment sheet for the cultural problem product research assignment, I want you to go through each of these sections with a fine tooth comb. I'm going to go over these sections right now and you can follow me as I go along as I go through these sections but I want you to spend the next week really really delving into this assignment sheet and making sure you have an understanding of what is being asked of you because for the next couple of weeks we're just going to be spending you're going to be spending time transferring what you have doing more research in and putting it within this framework. So you wanna be sure that you have an understanding of what you're doing, and I wanna make sure that I'm available to answer any questions or any challenges that you might be experiencing. So in terms of the introduction, this is the most important part of the, the, the or I should say the most important part of your introduction, and the entire paper will be your thesis statement. So here your thesis statement will convey to your reader what an analysis of the products produced within these social institutions reveal about your cultural problem and what you are going to examine in your paper. So what I've done is that I have set up a sample template that you can use to develop your thesis statement. What this template will allow you to do is that this, this template will allow you to not only develop a rough thesis statement, but will also allow you to anchor all of the sections of this paper because all of the sections of this paper are going to come back to this thesis statement. 
So if you look at the sample template that I provided for you on the assignment sheet, you'll notice that it has some blanks. So you'll see an analysis of blank within this social institution blank reveals blank about the cultural problem because. So for example, say that you are doing, you've been analyzing education and equity over the course of this semester. So you might say an analysis of this diversity and inclusion policy within the Wake County School District reveals that diversity and inclusion does not consider class difference because these policies don't talk about class. The because here, or what you say after the because, is the thing that you're going to actually analyze in the diversity policies. So in that sense, the following sections will support your thesis statement in different ways. For example, the review of the literature will provide the rationale for your research and create the need for the claim that you are making in your thesis statement. The review of the literature in this sense would be about the what the scholarship is talking about in relation to education and equity. The method section will communicate to the reader what and how you will analyze the cultural product to support your thesis statement. So here you'll talk about in my methods, I am going to compile diversity policies from these school districts. And as I compile these diversity policies, I, you know, I went onto their websites and I found their diversity policies. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a close reading of these policies and focus on the absence or the presence of references to class difference. And in this, I hope to find so you'll describe what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and what you hope to find in the methods section, which will go back to your thesis statement. The data analysis section, that will be the section that will illustrate what you include in the blank after because. So say for instance, you are going through and your larger cultural problem is education and equity. To analyze what's going on in education and equity, you are going to focus on diversity policies produced in these particular social institutions. And so your actual data analysis is going to actually conduct the thing that you said that you were going to do in your method section. So if in your method section you said that you're going to do a close reading and you're going to focus on references to class in diversity policies, you're going to actually break down that information in your data analysis. And as you're breaking that data down, you're going to be telling the reader how breaking down this data connects, breaking down this data in the cultural product, which is the diversity policy, how that supports your thesis statement. Finally, the conclusion section will tie everything together. You'll discuss the so what of your thesis statement and make final recommendations for further research. So below that in the assignment sheet, the, below this, um, this explanation, I've broken down each section in even greater detail, which I won't go into major depth in this video. I'll have you read that on your own. And if you have any questions, you um, can and ask me. But this new framing will allow for all of you to be able to conduct your research in the comfort of your own home. Some of you may be able to get out, a lot of you might be quarantined. This allows you to focus on an object of analysis. It allows you to focus um, using um, online resources provided at UNC Chapel Hill's library and beyond, and allows you to um, gather data, gather information through um, media outlets, through online outlets, so you do not have to get out into the public, um, considering the social moment. So think about your methods. Everyone's methods, in a sense, is going to be some sort of close reading and analysis of the cultural product 
that is connected to your larger cultural um, problem. So this works in ways if you, for instance, if you're doing um, a, a research paper or you're doing your cultural problem on um, um, labor unions in North Carolina, for instance, your review of the literature might be um, more broadly about labor unions in the U.S. and how researchers and sociologists and, and theorists have talked about labor unions or even theorized about labor. And you'll apply that information to an analysis of perhaps policies on labor unions in North Carolina or perhaps public service announcements or documents connected to that, connected to your cultural problem. Some of you might be doing a film analysis. If you're talking, for instance, about representation of LGBTQ plus um, representation in the media, you might say more broadly, my review of the literature is going to deal with how different um, scholars have taken up representations of LGBTQ plus folks in the media. And then, you know, the larger, the institutions that I'm thinking about are, I don't know, independent filmmakers. And you might look at these three films as cultural products. So over the next week, um, I want you to really think about what it is that you're going to actually analyze, how you're going to analyze it. And then when you're thinking about that cultural problem, what institution is it connected to? Some of you may find that approaching this assignment will be easier to approach it from the perspective of what's the cultural problem you're going to analyze or I'm sorry the cultural product you're going to analyze and then start and then think about the social institution that produces that others might think in reverse and might think about the social institution first and then think about some of the things that they produce so for instance that might be a difference of I want to first find this film that's to, or, or look at this documentary that's talking about climate change and then find the um, the actual media outlet that's supporting that. Or if the reverse of that might say that I want to look at North Carolina, um, I want to look at UNC um, Chapel Hill as the, as the larger social institution and then look at this particular diversity policy as a form of a cultural, um, cultural problem product. So as you, when you, when you go through and you review the um, new assignment sheet, make sure that you pay close attention to the grading rubric. As all papers in this course, your papers will be um, evaluated on content, organization, style, and conventions. Make sure that you look closely at the conventions. Um, for this cultural problem research assignment, it will be a minimum of 10 pages, double space, Times New Roman, or the equivalent of that. And that will be communicated in your blog, in your final um, blog post. For this paper, you need to have um, at least eight sources and at least four academic sources. And you're citing these sources according to either MLA, APA or Chicago manual style. And as a reminder, this paper will be due no later than 11.59 p.m. May 1st, 2020. Like I said before, I am able to be flexible when it comes to, um, or I'm able to sort of make accommodations as challenges come up around due dates. But you want to keep in mind for that May 1st due date for the final paper, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to be as flexible because it's going to be a pretty quick turnaround time when it comes to, um, when it comes to submitting final grades. I would, I would actually say as you're planning to um, complete the course assignments for this course and as you're thinking about writing that, that final paper, um, try to get that final paper done before May 1st. I would say the, the final, final deadline would be May 1st, but if you can get something you know a little bit before then, I would say um, definitely go for that. So that's all the information. I know that was a lot of information to cover. Um, that's all the information that I have for now. As a reminder of what you need to do for next week, 
Um, for this for this week, I want you to just think about. Um, I want you to think about the changes. Rewatch this video. Start thinking about a strategy for transferring what you have now into the new um, assignment, which is the cultural problem product research assignment. Reread that assignment sheet. Make sure that you understand it. Like I said before, I'm going to set up some time on Thursday for people who have questions. If you have individual questions, please, please feel free to reach out to me. But I want us to use this first week to just wrap our brains around things. I want us to use this first week to get ourselves oriented. I want us to use this first week to make sure that we have an understanding of what we're doing and use this opportunity to organize things and then we'll move on with with um, the more sort of you know getting this project together as the weeks um, move forward if you have any questions or concerns let me know remember like I said first breathe be gentle with yourselves move in a um, be graceful with one another um, I appreciate all of you for um, being patient with me in regards to grades. I'm a little bit behind on grades and I'm also behind on emails. I will be updating those items over the course of this week. Uh, along with updating those items, I will also, as I see fit, based off of the questions that we have, I will also be producing, um, anytime I'm producing any more, any new course materials, or for instance, if I have to set up a new video, I will make sure to give you warning before that. So make sure that you check your email every day. Make sure you check your email every day. Um, and I will also update you on once we get that um, rough draft of the cultural problem product assi um, research assignment, once we get that rough draft up, I'm also going to split you up into workshop groups. Um, so I will have all of that information as the weeks develop. Again, if you have any questions or concerns, let me know. In the meantime, happy reading, happy writing, be safe, be well, and I'll see you in cyberspace.